Hello. This is the readout of the uh, Security Council's consultations this afternoon on um, the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question, followed by um, the uh, situation in Iraq. Uh, so first of all, um, in my capacity as presidency, I can report uh, that the members of the Security Council met uh, in the consultations room to discuss uh, the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. Uh, following a full and detailed report from UN Special Coordinator Nikolai Mladenov three months after the passage of Security Council Resolution 2334, the members of their Security Council set out their positions. In my national capacity, I can add a bit more uh, to that, uh, which is to say that the United Kingdom welcomed uh, Nikolai Mladenov's uh, thorough comprehensive report in follow-up to Resolution 2334. Uh, the UK, uh, like many members of the Security Council, reaffirmed our commitment to the two-state solution as the only viable uh, long-term solution to this conflict. Uh, the United Kingdom is clear in our opposition to continued settlement activity, uh, which is illegal under international law, uh, and we have been equally clear uh, that there can be absolutely no justification for violence, uh, incitement, or acts of terrorism. And then back to my presidency capacity to report uh, on the discussion on Iraq. Uh, the members of the Security Council met to discuss the situation in Mosul and recent reports of the use of chemical weapons by Daesh. This session was called by Russia, and Russia and China circulated a draft Security Council resolution. Uh, the members of the Security Council expressed unanimous concern about the use of chemical weapons by anyone, anywhere, uh, and we look forward to the results of the Government of Iraq's investigation uh, into uh, those allegations uh, with the OPCW. Can you give us a little more information on that draft resolution and the purpose of it? And on the Middle East, did any members of the Council raise the possibility of further Council action in light of the report you received today? Uh, in my national capacity uh, on, on both of them, uh, the draft resolution uh, seeks to uh, extend the work of the Joint Investigative Mechanism, which, as you know, is currently mandated uh, to operate solely on and in Syria uh, to, to Iraq. Is that something that Britain would be open to? The UK uh, pointed out in the meeting, and I point out now, uh, the many differences between the situations in Iraq and in Syria. Uh, the uh, situ situation is different, first of all, because uh, the government of Iraq is fully cooperating with the OPCW. It is a state party in good standing uh, to the Chemical Weapons uh, Convention, uh, and it is, um, uh, there are no allegations uh, of the government of Iraq using chemical weapons against its own people. All those things mark out the situation in Iraq. Uh, from the situation in Syria. The JIM was set up precisely because uh, there was no other way of attributing responsibility given the lack of cooperation uh, with the regime in Syria. So the, government of, of the, the, the British government is against uh, expanding the JIM in this way. And on the Middle East? On the Middle East, uh, I think there will be every three months a report back uh, from Nikolai Mladenov on follow-up to Resolution 2334. Yes, Mr. Ambassador, is there any indication that either the Israelis or the, any of the various Palestinian parties have been trying to do better in their behavior in the past three months? What would you in your national capacity be looking for when the next report comes in at the end of June? What we're looking for is uh, to overcome all of the obstacles to peace in the Middle East. Clearly, uh, settlements are one type of obstacle to peace in the Middle East, and that is why uh, we deem them to be illegal and uh, a block on the road to peace, uh, and we very much uh, hope uh, and will carry on pressing for uh, that uh, activity to stop. At the same time, we recognize that there are many other obstacles to peace in the Middle East, and we call on uh, everyone involved to end terrorism to condemn terrorism whenever it happens, uh, to end incitement, uh, and to end the violence. So all of those things need to, to, to happen together before there can be progress. And yes, we very much uh, uh, will be looking for progress on all of them uh, before uh, three months are up. Okay, go ahead. 
Mr. Ambassador, can you describe a little bit of the tone of the discussions on the Middle East regarding the United States, given that one U.S. administration acceded to this resolution, but the current administration opposes it? Was that an issue, and how do the council members deal with that? I would let the United States speak for themselves, but as the U.K., we're working very closely with the U.S. administration on this issue and so many others, and it is clear from what the U.S. representative said today that the U.S. administration is continuing to develop its thinking on some of the points of detail about how to take forward initiatives towards peace in the Middle East. I wanted to ask you about the U.K.'s position on Palestine. I think earlier today, Julian Braithwaite, or the ambassador in Geneva, said that the U.K. seems to be calling into question whether there should be an agenda item 7, which is generally about Israel-Palestine. Is that the U.K.'s position, and has it impacted in any way? Is that a changed position, and does this indicate any change in your position here at the Security Council on things like the resolution on settlements? The U.K. position on the substance of peace in the Middle East remains unchanged. We continue to support the two-state solution as the only viable long-term solution there, and that means two states, Israel and Palestine, living side by side in peace and security. The issue about Geneva is that we have to ask ourselves whether the different parts of the U.N. family here in New York or in Geneva are doing everything they possibly could to bring peace in the Middle East closer, or whether actually they are becoming part of an obstacle to peace in the Middle East. And so I think what he was saying was that we need to make sure that the Human Rights Council, for instance, does not show any undue bias, and that the Human Rights Council focuses as best it can on helping to bring peace in the Middle East closer. In the Security Council, I don't think we have quite the same dynamic, but we will continue to use our position here to press for all obstacles to peace in the Middle East to be removed. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week.